folks, today's video is a book haul. Most of these I bought secondhand at the local book fair and so there are quite a lot of them because they were a dollar, a couple of dollars each. <laughs> so I have another video where I talk about the fiction and other vintage books that I found at the book fair. So if you want to view that you can click on the, the video in the cards or down in the description and I talk about a lot of the titles that are up here. But yes, today we're talking about the natural history books that I found, quite a few of which are on New Zealand natural history, some British natural history, British trees, which was something I really wanted as a reference um, for some of my work. And there are a couple of new books in there as well that I've bought that sort of fitted within this theme. So without further ado, let's crack on with the books. The first one here is The Field Guide to Trees and Shrubs of Great Britain. It did have a dust jacket, but I took it off because I think it looks better like this. Certainly on my shelf, it looks better. And yeah, it just has a, a good range of British trees and it goes through some of the life cycles of them, gives some details with um, the leaves and seeds, different aspects. And I thought that would be a good resource. Then there's the Ladybird Book of Trees, which I, I mean, I mostly got because I love these end pages. Um, but yeah, it's just got a bit of information and little illustrations on the other side. This one is the RSPB Guide to British Birds. Again, lots of useful illustrations with a bit of information on each. And these couple of old little gardening books that I found. So this is Old Wives Law for Gardeners, which is beautiful inside as well. It's got these lovely um, decorative illustrations. Um, yeah. I mostly got this because it's got very cute illustrations but I thought some of it might be quite interesting and possibly amusing to read as well. And then this one is The Curious Gardener's Almanac. Again this had a dust jacket but I've taken it off. Very lovely little illustrations and it just has little snippets of poetry and facts about the, the different flowers and there's a whole section on herbs and garden wildlife, little snail there. Could be something that's quite fun to refer to. Look how beautiful that is. Next up I'm going to show you the New Zealand ones. So this is a guide to the New Zealand seashore and the end pages have this map of the North Island and I'm going to assume that the South Island is at the back. Yes indeed. Great reference pictures. It has some um, colour plates in there but mostly I think it's kind of black and white. There are some photographs. I think this is yeah, quite a, a scientific resource. The next one is also New Zealand and it's uh, New Zealand trees and shrubs. This one has plain end papers and it's also upside down. Again very lovely little line illustrations, black and white. I think this will be helpful to me as well. Lots of detail. This is uh, Manuka. I like these sorts of line drawings as, as references. So yeah, that's gonna be rather helpful to me, I think. Then there's Plants of New Zealand, similar kind of thing. More photographs in this one. Um, oh yes, it has some color plates. Where did it go? Come back. Yes, this is a flower that is commonly known as Kaka Beak. And then there's this little one, which is so cute. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> and again, line drawings, love that. And I mean, I couldn't leave this one. It was just so cute. I do have a weakness for little books as well. This is a uh, Kofi, which is a yellow flower. It's actually the, the national flower of New Zealand, I think unofficially, but um, you may have seen this in some of my illustrations. Got a notebook cover that features that. Again, line drawings. Also to go in this series, there is the Native Birds book. This is a kiwi, very funny looking bird. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, I love these illustrations. <laughs> Just think they're great. And yeah, this is the fantail, which is a funny little little bird, also known as the piwaka waka in Māori. Another one for a dollar. I like the fact that this is a slightly wider format to usual. Yeah, it's got a bit about bird watching. Again, piwaka waka, fantail, it's a kingfisher. And just looking at the ink technique that's been used on these and sort of cross hatching, um, really nice. It's another book about New Zealand birds. Terribly sorry. But this one, yeah, it's got some color plates, as you can see, but maybe a bit more detailed information. This is New Zealand flowers and birds. And again, has yeah, lovely little compendium of New Zealand flowers. Love these. There we are. Kofi again and Kakabeek. We'll be seeing some of these birds over and over here. There is this one here on New Zealand, or early New Zealand botanical art. So this has got, yeah, scientific drawings from um, the first few ships that came out here. Pretty much every ship that came out, I think, had a, a botanist on board to collect samples and to do illustrations. Quite a bit of information in there too about the different voyages and botanists on those trips. Um, and then I've got two New Zealand books. These are art books. And these are actually, <laughs> I think my favorite books that I found at anything like this. I'm just gonna zoom out. Oh, I've got the sunlight coming in. Oh dear. Well, hopefully you'll excuse that because this is just stunning. I opened this up and gasped aloud. <laughs> Look at that. I'm completely in love with this illustration style and the fact that it's also New Zealand flowers is very exciting to me. Lots of black backgrounds which um, I love using in my own work so this is highly inspirational. <laughs> this is a, a tree wetter which is a, a weird and wonderful creature found in New Zealand. They're quite um, they're sort of armoured <laughs> armored beetle type things. They're not beetles, but they're, um, yeah, creepy crawlies. And I believe they're only found in New Zealand. I've never heard of them existing elsewhere. Um, they can be quite enormous as well, but they're generally pretty gentle, especially the bigger ones. <laughs> but <laughs> these ones look quite terrifying. Ah, oh, here we are. This is probably my favorite spread with all the, foliage around and then that absolutely stunning spider's web and there's not a spider in sight at least not that I can see which is quite nice to have that without the the creepy crawly bit and I'm so so chuffed to have found this uh, yeah these um, beach and and driftwood shapes the you know different forms there just love it and yeah, there are some landscape pictures as well. I went back later and found this one here, which is from the same artist, but it's the next volume. Let's see. Yeah, so this one has more um, of these landscapes, I think. And you've got these yeah, sort of ghosts of trees here. It's quite imaginative as well as being quite um, accurate to the different natural history elements. Yeah, so more spider's webs. These are, um, this is a manuka. It's got clematis again and kofi here. Yeah, I'm just a huge fan of this style um, because it's all done with stippling as well. So it's all made up of tiny dots, a bit like pixels, um, but this is sort of pre-pixel. These were done in the 1970s. I love images like this of, um, or dead leaves are all curled up and dried. Just beautiful. The last one I found at the book fair is <laughs> this one here, which is Marvels and Mysteries of Our Animal World. It was a dollar. Whoop! <laughs> and it had a dust jacket as well, but I just love this design underneath with the, the animal silhouettes, so I kept that. And again, the main reason I got this is because the end papers are just so lovely. Look at that. Um, I think this is largely photographs. It is. It's a, a 
caterpillar. <laughs> yeah, so mostly photographs in here. Well, quite a lot of information in here as well. Sort of, um, yeah, weird and wonderful birds. And oh yes, there's a little compendium at the back with, yeah, different animals from A to Z. So I've got two Beatrix Potter books. I'm quite fascinated by Beatrix Potter. I'm gonna start with this one because this is all about the art of Beatrix Potter. Um, and it's not just the art of Peter Rabbit and all her famous stories. It also has some of her natural history paintings and drawings. So it goes into, yeah, a lot of, a lot of depth with the different images and sketches that she did. Just beautiful. And yeah, a bit of biography as well. Some photos from her life. Yeah, she really was a natural historian in her own right. That's aside from her incredible illustrations. So, um, you know, her, her incredible Peter Rabbit and animal illustrations. But yeah, she had such, um, such an eye for detail and yeah, her images of fungi and, and all sorts, and she yeah really studied these these things. So there's yeah a whole section on fungi, which is just incredible. So yeah, if you're a fan of Beatrix Potter, I'd definitely recommend that one there. And then there is a celebration of Beatrix Potter, which is um, a lot of illustrations from different illustrators looking at characters from. Beatrix Potter and I will talk about this in a wrap up video soon because I've actually read it and yeah absolutely loved it it's delightful so yeah that will be coming soon with a bit more depth but yeah those are the books for now if you enjoyed this please subscribe and like and all of that <laughs> and I will see you in the next one bye